Learn how to build a beautiful and responsive web portfolio with SvelteKit and Tailwind CSS. SvelteKit is a framework for building web applications with Svelte, providing tools for server-side rendering, routing, and more. Tailwind CSS is a utility-first CSS framework for rapidly building custom user interfaces without writing custom CSS. When combined, SvelteKit and T Tailwind CSS offer developers a seamless experience, enabling the creation of highly interactive web applications with a clean, responsive design. James MacArthur created this course. He is a full-stack developer and course creator. Web portfolios, who needs them? Well, actually, a lot of people do. For example, you might be trying to get a tech job, or perhaps you want to have an internet space where you can show all of your portfolio work. Perhaps even you are looking for a coding project and just want an internet presence to demonstrate your flair and capability. All of these are brilliant reasons to have your own internet portfolio live and hosted on the internet. We're going to be coding the whole thing from scratch in SvelteKit and Tailwind. Brilliant tutorial, step by step, and at the very end we will deploy it so it's live on the internet and you can send it to your mum. So without further ado, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and let's dive into the code. So, demo of the web portfolio. Let's take a look. Here we have Samuel Oak, aka Fake Small James, and this is our landing page. We've got some nice get in touch buttons. We've got a couple of little navigation links up the top. It's all very catchy. As you can see in the background, we have this cool particle animation effect, which just makes us seem all the more deep and interesting. If we scroll down a bit or use these navigation links, we get some uh, project displays and we can use the go to buttons to actually click on them. If you wanted, you could add in a video. After that, we've got a bit about me. It's just uh, some information so that they can learn more about you. Looks super aesthetic. Finally, we've got a table because everyone needs a good table. This one weighs up all of the candidates if you're applying for jobs and shows that you are clearly the best candidate in the field. Finally, why not invest? And then at the very bottom, we have some little contact me uh, links in the footer of our document. So it just looks uh, very neat and tidy, not too complicated. And obviously the whole thing is also extremely responsive, super critical as well. So with the demo out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with our project. So for that, we're going to come over to the Tailwind CSS and SvelteKit init project documentation, which will be linked in the description down below. And we're at the same time going to open up a terminal in the directory of our choosing. And we are going to start typing in these commands. So that's going to be npm create svelte at latest. And we're going to give our project a name, which is going to be amazingly awesome portfolio. Let's hit enter on that. And that is going to start initializing our project. For now, we're just going to select a skeleton project. We are not going to do any type checking. We will add ESLint for code linting. And now we can go ahead and open up my amazingly awesome portfolio inside of a code editor. So I'm using Visual Studio Code, but you can use any code editor of your choice. And we can scroll down just here and we can, uh, inside of our Visual Studio Code, open up another terminal that's just going to be in the directory of our new project. Going to paste these npm install commands in. Once that one's done, we're going to do mpx tailwind css init dash p. And then we're just going to come over to our svelte.config and copy this stuff across. Uh, just displace everything that's currently there. And likewise with the tailwind.config, we'll do exactly the same. Down to the last two steps, we're going to have to come into our source directory inside of here. We are going to create a new file called app.css. We can go ahead and copy in these base directives. And likewise, we can come inside of the routes and create a plus layout.svelte where the plus layout is a reserved svelte component name that's going to wrap our entire project. And we can just go ahead and import that app.css in here. And as I said before, this slot is going to render out everything inside of the plus page.svelte which is another reserved Svelte component name. So finally, we're good to boot up our project. We can come down here and type npm run dev. 
that will open it up on localhost 5173. We can go there, hit enter, and here we see our project zoomed out way too much. Just to test that everything is working, I'm going to type class text green 400. We see that update and we know that it is working. So that is step one complete. We have now configured Tailwind CSS inside of our new SvelteKit project. So just before we dive in, let's take a look at the file directory that we are working with. The core folders that we're going to be looking at inside of this directory is the source and possibly the static directories. Everything else here is by majority just configuration files. Obviously, if you wanted, you could make a cool little readme.md for the project. Not going to be touching the node modules either. And inside of the source directory here, we have a lib folder where we can have some JavaScript if we wanted or anything that we wanted to import. Not going to be relevant for this particular tutorial. Routes is our route based navigation system. So the home route or the based level root route is just going to be this page.svelte, which gets rendered inside of this layout.svelte. These two files get rendered within our app.html just in this particular uh, tag right here. And obviously we have our app.css, which we may touch later on just for some custom styles. If you wanted to update the fav icon just here, that would be this particular file. And the other thing to know is that in here, we obviously have the head tag where we can add some header elements, or you can use the custom svelte head tag, uh, which we may or may not do later on in this video. So the first place we're actually going to start is in this app.html file right here. And that is going to be with some Google fonts and font awesome icons. So just initializing and configuring them. So we're going to come over to Google fonts. Nice and easy links for everything will once again be in the description down below. And we are going to look for Poppins is the font that we are going to be using in this project. And we are going to add all of the non italicized fonts to our little selection view the font families just here. Uh, so here we have all of the Poppins fonts. I guess you could take the italic ones that you want. And down here, you're going to see a large link tag with a copy at the bottom. We're going to copy that directly into our head underneath the, the head of our document, the head tags underneath the meta one, just there, paste that in nice and easy. And then we're also going to come over to the font awesome CDN page, uh, link in the description. And we're going to copy this top link tag right here as well. Paste that just atop the other one. And now we have imported our fonts and we have enabled the use of font awesome icons in our project. In addition to that, we are going to come into the body tag of our app.html just here. And we are going to give this a class. And this is just going to have a background of slate 950, a text of white and a relative tag. As for this div inside the body tag, we're going to give this a class as well. This is going to be relative and we're going to give this a Z index of a custom amount of one, which is why we wrap it inside of the square parentheses, save that. And we see our styles update as we would expect them to easy breezy cover girl. The next thing we're actually going to do is configure the particle JS that we saw in the background just here. To do that, we're going to come over to a package called particle JS right here, a lightweight JavaScript library. And we are going to look for the CDN package just here. So we can come over to the particle JS CDN package. We're going to copy this min one. And likewise with the other tags, we're just going to paste this up the top right here. And now we are going to get this up and running inside of our document by creating a div that has a class of absolute min height screen, top of zero, left of zero, a width of full, a Z index of a customer amount of negative one. And finally, an opacity of 70 so that it doesn't overwhelm everything. Inside of this, we're going to have a div and this has a class uh, of absolute and inset zero. And we're going to give this div an ID of particles. This has to be spelled correctly. Particles dash JS. And this is going to be selected by the particle 
uh, library that we just added. So we're going to add a script underneath that div and call particle JS particles JS dot load. And we're going to pass in that ID. So particles dash JS. And we're also going to load in an assets file. So that's going to be slash assets slash particles dot JSON. After that, we're going to pass in a callback function. So that's going to be a function. We're going to open up that function. And in here, we're just going to say console.log callback particles.js config loaded. Uh, make sure we close that just there. So that's going to load and break because we do not have that asset file in there at the moment, but that is absolutely fine. We can do that in a minute. The place that we are going to come across that asset file is if we go back to the original particle.js website. Here you can create your own custom one so you can, you know, interact with the background color, make it however you want. Uh, but I already have one that's pre-existing. You can download it from the GitHub repository that is linked in the description down below. And so we're just going to come into our directory here inside of static. We're going to create a new folder called assets and that is going to have a particles.json file paste that all in and now if we refresh the page we would have expected that particle.js file to load however it did not and that's because the script tag that we copied from earlier is not going to cut the mustard so make sure you copy the script tag from the github repository also it's just the one specifically for the particle JS on line six. And just like that, we can see we have our uh, particles in the background. Uh, super neat little effect that just makes your portfolios look even techier. So that pretty much ends our start in the app.html file. The next one we're going to come over to is the app.css. And in here, what we are going to do is start off by selecting the HTML of our document and we are going to give this a scroll behavior of smooth. After that, we're going to select everything in our entire page and give that a font family of Roboto and a backup of sans serif. Now you might say, James, we don't have the Roboto font family and you would be absolutely correct because I forgot to add it. So we can quickly resolve that by coming back into Google fonts, throwing in all of these styles above and beyond the ones that we have already added uh, from the Poppins library. Quickly toss all them in the mix and just copy that link tag once more and replace the prior one that was already inside of our app.html just here. So just these ones, nice and quick and easy and that font will update inside of our document. After changing everything to Roboto, we're going to select the H1, H2, and H3 tags, and we're going to give them a font family of, you guessed it, Poppins, and likewise a backup of Sans Serif. And in addition to selecting the actual tags, we're also just going to create a class that's called Poppins, which is also going to apply the Poppins font family. So that's going to do for this document for now. So we can close out a couple of these config files. And the next thing we can do is come into our source directory and create a new folder called components. And this is going to have the core components of our document, which is going to be a footer.svelte. We'll have a header.svelte. We're going to have a main.svelte. And we're also going to have a step.svelte. So ensuring that the component name is capitalized and we have the .svelte at the end of the component. With that, we can come into the main of our document and we can add a script and we can also just call the main component, render that out like we have here and import main from dot dot slash component slash main dot svelte. So it's going to import that component just there. We can check that that's working by typing, but that is not going to work because this is actually meant to go inside of this uh, page component just here. So we're going to render out the main component. And then in here we can type James 
that comes up on the screen as we would expect. So that component is working nicely. So yeah, just copying everything that we previously had in main into this page.layout. So that's our components working. The next one we're going to come into is the layout. And this one has a little bit more going on. We're going to start off with a div and this is going to have a class of relative flex flex column a max width of 1400 pixels uh we use square brackets because that's a custom amount an mx of auto a width of full text small uh until we reach the small breakpoint and then the text is going to be the base size and finally min height of screen as well uh, I'm actually going to not do so much of the styling and start off just doing the HTML first and we can come back and do the styling later. But other than that, we're going to have a div just in here. We'll come back and do the class shortly. This div is going to contain a button that has an up arrow. So that is going to be a font or some icon. So we can call icon class FA solid FA arrow up. Equally, you could look at the Font Awesome site and just copy that directly. Now, this little icon right here is going to show up in the, you can't see the bottom of our screen, so there it is, this little icon. We're gonna use that for that effect right there, but more on that later. After our button, we're going to have our header component, which is gonna get imported up the top. Then we are going to have our slot in the middle, which is going to be everything inside of the page, which is the main of our document. And then at the bottom, we can have our footer component, which we will also import. And then finally, down the bottom of our document, we're going to have a special Svelte component. It's going to be Svelte window. And we're going to bind the scroll Y height, set that equal to a variable Y, which we are going to define shortly. And we're also going to bind the inner height and we're going to bind the inner width. Super simple and easy. Now, if we come up the top, we can say let inner width or inner height equals zero. And we can say let inner height, uh, sorry, width equal zero also. And while we're up here, we may as well define a function that is go top. Uh, and this is just going to say document.body.scroll into view and that will scroll us to the top of our page. So now that we've done all of the componentry inside of our plus layout, we may as well add in the styles. So for this div right here, which contains our back to top button, we're going to wrap our classes string inside of an object so that we can make it a bit more customized and give it a position of fixed bottom zero with full duration 200 flex padding of 10 and a Z of a custom number 10. We're going to make sure we leave a space at the end of that string and then add a plus and the circular braces. And in here we're going to run a logic check that just says Y is greater than zero. This just means that we have scrolled away from the top of the page. And then we're going to say if yes, we're going to have a string and if no, then we're going to have a different string. So this is just a one line if else check using the question mark. This is the truth statement. This is the false statement. If the Y is greater than zero, we're going to set the opacity to full. We're going to set pointer events to auto and otherwise we're going to say pointer events none and we're going to set the opacity to zero so if we come into our page we can see that something is severely wrong and that's because down here we have to make sure we close this little svelte window uh, and just like that it's all working the next component we're going to style is our header component now in here, what we're going to do is we're going to say export let Y and that all needs to be inside of a script tag. Don't let me forget to do that. So we're going to add the script tag just here. We're going to say export let Y. This is how we pass props between components. So this is essentially us receiving the prop. 
if it was just a variable defined inside of this component, we wouldn't need the export. And inside of our layout, we just want to make sure to our header that we actually pass down Y. So we're going to say Y is equal to Y. And while we're actually back in here, I forgot to finish one or two other things. We're just going to quickly add an on click event to this button that is inside of our layout. Uh, and that's just going to say go top. And finally, we're going to add a class to the very same button and just say margin left of auto, which is ML auto rounded full background slate 900 text violet 400 padding x3 until we hit the small breakpoint at which point we set the padding x to 4 a hover of background slate 800 cursor pointer uh, display of grid place items center and an aspect square should do us pretty well so yeah let's go ahead and close that layout component and come back into our header where we have just m or just received that prop the y prop after that we're going to define a header component inside of our header we have an h1 tag uh, inside of the h1 we're going to have a bold this is going to be your name so i'm going with samuel and then outside of the bold we're going to have the secondary name which is going to be oak after the h1 we're going to have a div that has a class uh, that we will define shortly and in here we're going to map out some items using the svelte kit or svelte each where we say hashtag each inside of the curly parentheses we pass in an array which is tabs and we say each individual item is going to be referred to as tab and we're also going to take the index inside of here we're going to register out an anchor tag and inside the anchor tag we're going to have a paragraph that just has the tab dot name with that we should probably come into our script and just uh, define tabs so that's going to be let tabs equal to the square brackets uh, so an array and inside of our array we're going to have a series of objects uh, each object will have a name so the first one for example will be projects and then the link is going to be hashtag projects which will be the id of that section as we define shortly i'm going to duplicate that three times and just uh, set the second one to about uh, me and that's just going to have a link of about or an ID of about and then finally we're going to have blog and then I'm going to delete this last one uh, because it's not entirely necessary if you have a blog then that is awesome and in here we also have to make sure we actually add a key for that particular value so that that is happy uh, you'll notice in this portfolio just here if you click blog we get which possibly isn't the effect you're looking to have for any prospective employers. So if you have a blog, then obviously feel free to add that one in. So now we can see each of the items showing up on the screen just there, just as we would want. We can go ahead and start styling everything in this component. We're going to start off with the uh, class on the header. Now, like in our previous component, we're going to wrap that inside of wrap the string inside of a curly parentheses because it's going to have some dynamic classes and that's going to be sticky. We're going to give it a Z index of 10, a top of zero, a duration of 200, a padding X of six flex items center justify everything between. We're going to give it a border B, a border solid. And then after all of that, we're going to finish that with a space in the end of that string. And then we're going to have plus circular parentheses. And in here, once again, we're going to say Y greater than zero. If it's true, we're going to have one class uh, appended, if not another set. So if it is true, we're going to say padding Y of four, background slate 950 and border violet 950. And if it's false, we're going to say padding Y of six, background transparent and border transparent and we'll see what that does shortly but essentially what it means is that as we uh, scroll when we scroll away from the header then it's just going to make the background opaque and we're going to get a border bottom showing up so that will look nice after that we have our h1 this is going to have a class of font medium uh, the bold tag is going to have a class of font bold and we're going to set that to poppins 
And then after we've styled the H1, we're going to select the div and just say small flex items center gap for and otherwise hidden. So the default display will be hidden on a small screen. And then when we get to a bigger screen, we're going to have a display of flex. Uh, so we can see that coming in now. After that, we're going to style the anchor tags. This is going to have a class of duration 200, hover text violet 400. And we also have to make sure that we add the href equal to uh, tab dot link as we defined above. So that will work for our navigations. We can see if that's working. It is indeed very nice. And then finally, what we're going to have is a, another button, although this is technically going to be an anchor tag. This is going to have a class of blue shadow, which we will define shortly, a custom class. After that, we're going to say relative overflow hidden px5 padding y of 2 group rounded full background white text slate 950. Inside of here, we're going to have a div that has a class of absolute top zero right full width full height full background violet 400 and opacity of 20. We're also going to say group hover uh, semicolon and we're going to translate that element x full a z of zero and a duration of 200. After this element, we're going to have an H4. This is going to say get in touch. And we'll just have to give this one a class of relative and a Z of nine. For this whole anchor tag, we're going to have an href equal to whatever social media uh, platform you want them to get in touch with you. So that could be LinkedIn. Uh, copy that link and paste it in there. And we're also going to set the target to underscore blank. And now we can see the effect that this has, that little pseudo effect. It just... Uh, we get that hover, which is quite nice. So that is our header done. The next component is going to be the main component. Now inside of our main component, we're going to start off by opening up a script just as we have here. And then after that, you guessed it, we have a main component or main tag. We can go ahead and open that up. And uh, after that, we're going to have a section which we will give an ID equal to intro page and for the main we're going to give this a class of flex flex column and a flex of one so that it occupies as much space as it can uh, and we're also going to give that page a padding of four now for the section we have here essentially we're going to split up each part of the main in sections so the first section second section third section so that would be the blog and the you know projects and about me uh, and that's what the IDs are for to scroll us to each individual section, as you will see shortly. So our first section is going to have a display of grid. Grid calls one until a large breakpoint, at which point we will upgrade to a grid calls two. We're going to give it a gap of 10, a padding Y of eight, and a small padding Y of 14 uh, when we go above that small breakpoint. Following that, we're going to have a div that has a class of flex flex column on a large display or more. We're going to justify everything center. We're going to put the text center until we get to the large display. And then we're going to say text left. We're going to put a gap of six until we get to a medium screen and then upgrade to a gap of eight. And then on the large breakpoint, we're going to go to the gap of 10. Inside of here, we are going to have an H2 tag. This is going to have a class of font semi bold text 4XL uh, until we get to the small screen, then it's going to be text 5XL. And then on a medium screen, it's going to be text 6XL. So nice and large. And this is going to say, hi, I'm a span tag class. Poppins text violet 400. This is going to be for a pretty uh, little violet section. This is going to say Samuel or whatever your name might be. After that, we can continue Oak. Going to insert a breakpoint in the text. And then we're going to say full stack. And then we're going to have that same span once again, just there. And this is going to say developer. 
And if we save that, we can see exactly how those two spans work right there. I think that looks pretty nifty. After that div, we can have a paragraph tag, and this is going to have a class of text base small, text large, uh, and medium text extra large. So always going up. And this can say my uh, same span class text violet 400 favorite tech includes JavaScript, uh, specifically Next.js. And obviously you would make this custom to yourself or Svelte Kit, as you probably noticed. Tailwind CSS, no surprise there. Node JS plus Express JS and Postgres SQL or Firebase slash Firestore exclamation. And then we have our neat little text showing up. And after that, we are going to finish it off with a button. It's going to be a very similar button to what we have in our header. And that's just going to be the same anchor tag as before. We're going to have a class of blue shadow MX auto large screen or more is going to be MR auto. So margin right auto. We're going to say text is the base size until we get to the small screen. Then it's going to be a text of large. And then on the medium screen, we're going to go for a text extra large. We're going to give it the font family poppins relative display overflow hidden padding X of six padding Y of three. Uh, we'll add a group rounded full background white and a text slate 950. After that, add exactly the same as we did in our header. We can copy that div. That's that little background div in. And we can actually also just copy this H4 tag uh, once again into just after that div right there. And what we can do after this one though, is we're going to use the HTML arrow. So that's the ampersand R A R R roar. And now we get the uh, little ampersand right there. And just like that, we have a cool link. We're also going to have the cursor pointer style added to that. And in here, just like you did uh, in the header, we're going to add the href or the link to your social media profile or wherever you want them to get in touch and a target equals underscore blank once again. So that is one half of our grid display done. Then we're going to have the second half, which is going to be a div that has a class of relative shadow 2XL, an extra big shadow, and then a grid and a place items center. Now in here, we're going to have an image tag, and this is going to be an image of your choosing whatever you like. We're going to access this image from images slash profile.png or whatever it is that you saved it as. And that should actually be source equals. Uh, equally, we'll have to add the alt, which is just going to be a profile image. And finally, we're going to add a class, which is just object cover, a Z index of a custom amount of two. And we're going to set the maximum height equal to 70% of the view height. Now this image doesn't currently exist for me, but I'm just going to paste it in there. Going to create the file. It's going to be images, uh, reveal in finder, paste that in. And now if we open that up, that is right there. And if I save this, we get the image showing up on the screen. Happy days. The only thing that is being a bit mischievous here is uh, this. And that's just because our button should be wrapped inside of the div inside of our header.svelte. Uh, and that's going to make it match the replica. Equally, you could actually have it outside if you prefer the button to display on the smaller mobile screen. Uh, that would be totally viable also. So you know what, maybe we actually do just leave it outside. Then the get in touch just is always there. I actually prefer it like that. So that is the first uh, part of our main component complete. On to the second. 
So that's going to require a new section. And who can guess what this section is going to have an ID of? Well, it's going to be from the links above. It's going to be projects. Uh, so we can go ahead and enter that. I'll make some space in here. And now we can give this a class of padding Y of 20. On a large screen or bigger, we can say padding Y of 32. Flex, flex column and a gap of 24. Inside of this section, we have a div that has a class of flex, flex column, a gap of two and a text of center. This is going to be the header essentially for this section which is why inside of that we have an h6 that says a few of my creative endeavors full stop this h6 is going to have a class of text large small screen or larger text extra large and on a medium or bigger screen we're going to say text to extra large uh, noting that large should be LG, not large. Underneath that, we're going to have an H3. This is going to be the actual title. Uh, and this is going to say curious to span class Poppins text violet 400, as we have seen. C, after that, we can continue with my work, question mark. The H3 is going to have a class of font semi bold text three extra large small text four extra large, medium text, five extra large. And then underneath that, we can have an anchor, which is going to have an href. This is going to be the watch the video button, or you can just rickroll them like I have. The rickroll link is actually going to be used in this project. So if you want that, copy that from the GitHub repo directly. We're going to want to make sure that this one has a target equals underscore blank to open up a new tab. And this is going to have a class of margin X auto padding X four padding Y two rounded medium border border solid border white a display of flex item center gap of two minus margin bottom four unless we are on a small screen in which case it's going to be minus bottom uh, <laughs> minus margin bottom zero. Uh, and then we're going to set the minus margin top is uh, 10. So it's essentially just setting a negative value. On hover, we're going to set the border to being a violet 700 color. And we're just going to give the whole thing a duration of 200. And in here, we're going to have an icon that has uh, the class if a regular uh, and then if a circle dash play. Once again, you can copy these, uh, sh code them straight in or copy them from the font awesome page. And after the icon, we're going to have a paragraph tag that just says, watch the video. So we should be able to see this pop up down here. There we have our margin top being super weird. Talk about misbehaving. Ah, and that is because it is supposed to come after the div, not be within the div. So just fixing that, we get our little watch and we can also use our little scroll to the top button, uh, which is super nice and neat. Beneath all that, but still within the section, we're going to open up a div that has a class of grid. Grid calls one until we hit a large screen, at which point we're going to set it to grid calls three. So that'll be three columns. We're going to have a gap of 12 until we get to the large screen. And then we're going to have a gap of 10 downsizing. In here, we're going to use the step component that we have created, and we're going to have three of them. So we're going to call step, uh, and we're going to duplicate it three times. But before we do, we want to make sure that they have an opening and closing tag, because that is going to be important for later. And in here, we're just going to pass down a prop known as step, and we're going to set that equal to steps, which is an array that we haven't yet defined with the index, which is going to be the number or the uh, sequence, the ordered sequence of which it is. So it's going to be 0, 1, 2. Now, as for what goes into step, we're going to have to come up to our script and define uh, steps. So that is going to be an array, and it's going to be an array of objects where each object is going to have a name field and an icon field. Uh, we're going to have three of these. 
The first one is going to be the small James store or whatever your project is. And we're just going to copy in the class name for the icon of your choosing. So this is going to be FA cart shopping. Let's just go ahead and take a look at some of the other icons though. So we can come over to fontawesome.com links in the description and we can head over to their icons, type in banana. I don't know if we'll oh, look, they have bananas, just not in the free package. We want to make sure that we're using the free icons as much as we can, but you could have just about anything, you know, here's all the free icons. So you could want one for Docker, for example, and you can just copy the class string, not the whole tag. So that is all very straightforward. Our second step is going to be ultimate to do's. Uh, this is going to have an icon of FA solid, FA list check. And then the last one is going to have an icon of FA solid, FA diagram project and a name of Pokedex, which if you're not familiar, is what Samuel Oak originally came up with. He is the Pokemon professor that sends Ash Ketchum on his mission. So here we have the Pokedex. Now I should also note that these are project tutorials that I'm going to be creating soon. So if you want the ultimate portfolio full of projects that are going to get you a job just like these, then like and subscribe and stay tuned for those to come. Anyway, now we have the steps. We can start on our step component. Obviously, we are passing down the step as a prop, so we're going to have to receive it inside of the script tag. So we can say export let step. That will give us access to the step in this component. And then we're going to have an anchor tag. It's going to have an href equal to curly braces. That's going to be the step dot the href, which is the link to the project. We're going to make sure that anyone who clicks on this is going to get opened up in a new tab. So perhaps it takes it, uh, the user to the GitHub port page for the project or all the code, or perhaps to a live deployed version of the project. And after that, we're going to give it a class of padding for a uh, small breakpoint padding six, medium breakpoint padding eight, flex, flex column gap for rounded large border, border, solid border, violet 700 text center group cursor pointer hover border violet 400 and finally a duration of 200. Inside of this, we're going to have a div that has a class of background slate 950 grid place items center a padding x of four a text of five extra large medium text text six extra large uh, we're going to set a negative margin top of 10 on the small breakpoint it's going to be negative margin top of 12 medium breakpoint negative margin top of 14 and large is going to be negative margin top of 16 margin X of auto and a duration of 200 inside here. We're going to have the icon with the class that is the step dot icon, uh, just like that. So we can use the curly parentheses to set that after that div, we're going to have an H three, uh, that is going to be the step dot name. Also, I should just clarify that this whole class here is to, essentially create the effect that we see just here where it blocks out the purple line and creates the space and the negative margin top just drags the whole thing up so it overlaps the the border of the container uh, but back to the h3 we can set a class of font medium text extra large small text 2xl and finally medium text 3xl uh, after that, we're going to render out the slot, which is essentially going to be the children components, which is anything wrapped within the opening and closing tags of the component rendered out inside the main dot svelte. And then finally, we can have a div that has a class of flex one flex justify between gap of four and items end. And inside of here, we can have a div that has a class of margin left auto cursor 
pointer. On hover, we're going to have a text of slate 950, a duration of 200 relative. And then we're going to add in some pseudo effects. So we're going to say after, we're going to use the after pseudo effect and give that a position of absolute. We're going to say after top of zero, we're going to say after height of zero, after right full, after width full, after height full, after duration 200. Uh, and then this one's even more complicated. It's going to be on the hover. We're going to set the after equal to translate X of full. Finally set the after to a Z index of negative one and an overflow of hidden. Now inside of here, we can have a P that has a class of relative and a Z of four. And this can say go to, and then we can have the ampersand rar for the right arrow. And that will show up with a beautiful go to just like that. Now, one thing that I notice is that the after should also have a background of white. So we're just going to add that in after background white. I think I forgot that. And then we can set the Z to negative one again. And now we just get this nice little link hover effect as they uh, click on it. Technically they can click anyway, but it just makes people feel better. And it's more obvious if you actually give them a go to link. So now that we have defined that component, we can come back into the main section of our document and we can just add in the children content to the step components. And that is going to be a paragraph tag that says small James store is a merchandising store created with, then we're going to throw in a strong tag with a class of text violet 400. And we're going to have some tech. So it's going to be next JS commerce JS stripe and node JS plus express js my goodness doesn't that sound like a good tech stack you should definitely watch that video when it comes out uh after that we're going to say commerce.js is a product content management system and stripe is used for all transaction handling so that is our first one we're actually going to copy and paste that inside the rest of them and then we're going to say for the second one ultimate to do's is a full stack uh, and this is also going to be next js uh no js plus express uh and firestore and fire i guess it is firebase uh, CRUD application, application that allows a user to log in, manage a tidy, not tiny, an efficacious, there's a good word, to-do list, and persist this information across devices. So that's the second one. After we've done that, we can get rid of all of the content between there and the full stop. And now we can do the very last one, which is going to just say the Pokédex is a, then we're going to use the strong tag with a class of text violet 400. And in here, it's going to say Svelte kit and tail when CSS, uh, then we're going to jump outside of the strong tag, uh, web application, comma, hosted on, uh, and then we'll do another strong tag, just as we have before, hosted on Netlify. Uh, and then we can say, that consumes and caches the then we're gonna have another strong tag pokemon api to display all pokemon information gotta catch em all and then we can get rid of all of the remaining text just there and that's going to do it for our three uh items just here 
And that's also going to do it for this section. So now we can create the last section that comes above our footer. And this one is going to have an ID equal to about so that when we click the about keyword, which is up the top, it will take us down to this section. Also note that this should not be in the middle, uh, but we can fix that very easily just by saying, uh, if we come into the header, we'll set this to an ML auto flex one. Let's actually just do ML auto. And we're also going to need a PR of four. Uh, so that's just gonna push them over there and keep that button for us. But anyway, back to the main component. So we can close that, come down here. We've got our last section, which is the about. We're going to give it a class of padding Y of 20, but we're going to separately set the padding top to 10. Then on a large breakpoint, we're going to set the padding top to 16. And additionally, on another large breakpoint, we're going to set the padding Y to 32. We're going to give it a flex, flex column, and a gap of 16 until the small breakpoint where we'll have a gap of 20, and then the medium breakpoint where we're going to have a gap of 24. And finally, a position of relative. Inside of here, we're going to have a div. This one is going to have a large-ish class, so bear with me. This one is going to be a flex, flex column, a gap of two, text center relative. Uh, we're going to say before, so we're going to use the pseudo before element. We're going to give the pseudo before a position of relative. We're going to go before top of zero, before left of zero, before is going to have a width of two thirds before is going to have a height of 1.5 before is going to have a background of violet 700. Uh, and if we save that, we can see we get this line here. So that's perfect. And now what we're going to do is we're going to copy all the before styles. Uh, so we'll copy them and then we'll paste them just afterwards. And we're also going to select all the pasted befores and we're going to change them to afters. So we're going to have two separate pseudo elements. And we're also going to have to change the left for a right and a top for a bottom. And then we're going to change the, well, actually that's pretty much it. So now we can just come in here and we can add the actual elements. So this is going to have an H6 that says want to know more question mark tantalizing i'm sure they absolutely do we're going to give this a class of text large until we get to the small breakpoint where it's going to be text extra large and then the medium is going to be text to extra large uh, so we'll save that there's our want to know more for some reason our bottom one isn't moving over so our before is left zero our after should be right of zero. Not sure what is causing that, but we can come back and fix that in a minute. After that, we're gonna have an H3, and this is going to say uh, a bit. Then we're gonna have our classic span that has a class of poppins, text 3XL. Sorry, that's actually just text violet 400. And inside of here, we're going to say about, because this is the about section. And then we can finish that off with a me dot. So there we have a bit about me. This H3 is going to need some styles. So that's going to have a font semi bold text 3XL until the small break point where we're going to bump it up to a text 4 extra, 4 extra large. And then finally on the medium, a text 5XL. So now we have that header. And for some reason, we have that misbehaving div. So what I'm going to do is I figured out exactly what it is. This after right here and this before both need to have a position of absolute. Uh, so that fixes that perfectly. I am just a Muppet. But the one thing we're going to have to add is a padding Y of four. And then now we have the desired effect, not that you can even see it, but there it is just there.
So that's that section looking nice and tidy. Underneath this div, we're going to have a paragraph that has a class of MX Auto Poppins font semi bold text large small text extra large medium text 2xl and this is going to say i am dot 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 with spaces between the dots and then under here we're going to have a div that has a class of flex flex call gap of 20 with full mx auto and a maximum width of a custom amount so we use the square brackets that's going to be 800 pixels in here we're going to use the each which is going to map over all of our benefits and we can extract each individual benefit as a benefit and we're also going to take the index and then we can close the each and in here we're going to have a div that has a class of flex a gap of six until we get to small and then we're going to have a gap of eight now for this we're actually going to need to define some benefits so we're going to come up to the top to our script and say let benefits equal to an array where each index is going to be an uh, object and so in here we're going to have a name field and we're going to have a description field uh, so let's just duplicate that three times and for the first one I'm going to say a self-taught developer uh, for the second one I'm going to say a product design and UX fanatic and then for the last one I'm going to say an excellent communicator can't neglect the soft skills and then I'm quickly going to fill out the descriptions I'm actually just going to copy and paste them uh, I'd recommend writing stuff that you personally resonate with but if you want to use this as a template then the code is in the github if you just want to copy and paste that across so there are our benefits added uh, it looks like somewhere in here we have to escape uh, an exclamation point but that's all good and so now back down to this div we can open that up and in here we are going to start off with a paragraph tag that has a class of poppins text for extra large small breakpoint text 5 extra large medium breakpoint text 6 extra large uh, it's going to be a text slate 500 so it's not very uh, standoutish and we're going to give it a font of semi bold and this is actually going to have the index plus one so we're going to use the curly parentheses to render out a javascript uh, value and if we save that here we can see we get the one two three showing up and then after this paragraph we're going to have a div that has a class of uh well that should say a div not id div that has a class of flex flex column uh, a gap of six until we get to the small breakpoint, then we're going to have a gap of eight. So all the gaps are equivalent. And in here we can have an H3 that has a class of text two extra large, small breakpoint text three extra large. You're probably getting the vibe for this. Until I say on a medium we're going to go text five XL. So we're going to jump up one. That's going to have the uh, the benefit dot name. And then underneath that we're going to have a paragraph tag that has the benefit dot description and that's just going to be as you would expect and so now we have the uh, section showing up looks like you're seeing some artwork in a museum looks very nice and tidy and so if we take a look at the actual website we can scroll down to the bottom and see that after that we just have this uh, header here we've got the table and then we've got our footer so not much left to go uh, and so that's going to start off after the div above the closing section we're going to have an h5 and this is going to say the and then we're going to have a span that has a class of text violet 500 uh, 400 sorry uh, complete and then we're going to have space package because we are the complete package 
And then under that H5, we're going to have a div that has a class of flex, flex column, overflow, X of scroll, a gap of 10, a maximum width of a custom amount of 800 pixels. So we use the square brackets, an MX of order and a width of full. And then within this div, we are going to have our table. Uh, so this is going to have a class of background white, a text of slate 700. We're going to say rounded and text center. Then we can open that up. And now inside of here, we're going to have the table head, which is going to have a class of border bottom, uh, border solid, border slate 200. Uh, and then we're going to have a TR with a class that's just empty. And this is going to contain a TH tag that's empty. Then we're going to have a TH with a class of white space dash no wrap, a padding of two and a padding X of four. And this is going to say candidate number one. And we're going to duplicate this uh, a couple of times. So we're going to have a candidate two, a candidate three. And then the last one is going to say me, except this one is going to have a background of violet 700 and a text of white. Uh, and we're also going to give this one a padding of four and a padding X of eight. So if we scroll down, we can see that showing up down there. Uh, that is all hunky dory. Underneath the TR, well, actually the T head, we're going to have the table body. And this is going to have a TR that has a class of border B, border solid. Oh, that needs to say class. A class of border B, border solid, border slate 200. Close that. Inside of here, we're going to have a TD that has a class of border right, border solid, border white padding left of four padding right of eight padding y of four a font of semi bold and a text of small and this is going to say dedication and then we're just going to have a uh, another td that contains an icon with a class of fa solid fax mark which is a tick mark and that's going to say text slate 500. Uh, now we're going to duplicate this four times and we're going to change the last one to be a green 500. So if we save that now, we can see that show up. So here we have the dedication row. Uh, and the last one, instead of being a cross, should actually be a check so that it shows a green tick where the rest of them show X's. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just basically duplicate this TR. Uh, I think it's four times one, two, three. So we get four in total. The second one is going to say critical thought. It's good to be a uh, critical thinker. Then we're going to have interpersonal skills. Uh, if you don't have these, then I'd aim for a remote work environment like myself. And then we're going to have a programming ability after the last one. Now we're also going to, oh, actually we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Uh, if I notice that we, our little uh, scroll up icon is just looking a bit funny. So that's going to be in the uh, layout component. If we just come up here, we want to make sure that on our button here, we have a rounded full, but we also have an aspect of square. So that's just going to make that circular. You can't see it down the bottom, but it is there. Uh, so just on that button, make sure you have an aspect square. But now we can close that and continue what we were doing. The other thing we're going to do on uh, these is just rearrange some of the checks and colors. So in the first one, we can see we've got all X's. We can't have them all having X's. So what I'm going to do is just uh, change this one to a check. Uh, on the next one, the middle two are going to be checks. 
uh, on the third one we're going to have the first two as checks in addition to the oh that was the wrong one well it doesn't really matter as long as we get some variety which means that the last one is going to be the first and third are going to be checks so we should be the only one that has all checks which is exactly what it is and then what we can do is say uh, I might actually just add into this TD just here uh, for all of them so we'll select all of them and we're going to say white space no wrap and that's just going to make sure that they don't wrap around uh, and that they do actually overflow and then we can scroll and then underneath this table well actually the div that contains the table we're going to have a second div and this is going to have a class that says mx auto uh, minus margin top of 12 italic on a small screen or larger we're going to hide it because it's not relevant and we're going to say opacity of 50 and in here we're going to have a paragraph that just says uh, scroll to see more and then we're going to have the ampersand rar for the right arrow and that's just going to have a little scroll to see more on a small screen when we do have the overflow uh, so that people know that that's what the intention is and then if we go to a bigger screen it's not actually going to show there because they can just see the whole table so just a good thing to do to make sure that people aren't missing out on seeing all of your amazing skills finally after the div we're going to have a, another paragraph that just says class of mx auto and that's going to say so why not invest because everyone should invest in you guys you guys are great uh, also i noticed the complete package is not sitting where it's meant to uh, so we have an mx of auto well actually the complete package is missing a few things to be honest i obviously jumped way over that so if we come up to the complete package that needs to have a class that says text to extra large small breakpoint text three extra large we're going to say font semi bold text center and poppins uh, and that's going to resolve that for us and i'm also just going to chuck a poppins in the span poppins so now that is looking primo extremo so that's it for our main finally we can come into our footer component this one's not all too complicated. We're going to start off with a footer HTML tag. Who would have guessed? We're going to give this a class of padding Y 20 until we hit a small breakpoint, and then it's going to be padding Y of 32. A background of black, so it's going to stand out. A border top, border solid, border violet, 950, pretty dark. We're going to give it a flex, a flex column, a gap of four until we're small, then it's going to be a gap of eight, uh, and it's going to be a justify center items center. It's going to make everything centered. Then we're going to have a P that has a class of PX4, PY2, background white, text slate, 950, and a font of medium. This is going to say connect uh, with me, and then we're going to have the ampersand down arrow so this one's a dar uh, followed by the semicolon so i can see that there and i'm sure you can too on your screen it's just hidden behind my face then we're going to have a div and this is going to have a class of flex flex col a gap of four item center and a justify center in here we're going to have a paragraph tag that has a uh, bold unit this bold unit is going to have a class of PR2 and this is going to say email and then we're going to have the uh, actual email so that's going to be Samuel or whatever your email is Samuel underscore oak at gmail.com so we can see that show up down there and now we're just going to essentially duplicate this once because uh, the second one's going to be a bit different. 
So for the second one, what we're going to do is get rid of the Samuel Oak and I'm going to hit enter. And instead, we're actually going to have an anchor tag that has a class of text violet 400. It's also going to have a target of underscore blank and an href equal to whatever the link for the social media that you're adding is going to be. In here, we're going to have the name of your GitHub. So this one should be changed to GitHub instead of email. GitHub, and in here, that's just going to be Samuel Oak. Uh, and then we're going to have a sub tag. Very cool, I know. That's for superscripts, uh, and that's n going to contain a span that has a class of text extra small, a scale of 75 and a padding left of 0 0.5 and in here we're going to have an icon that has a class of fa solid fa arrow up right uh, from square all of those need to be joined with a uh, dash we're going to have a text of extra small and we're also going to scale this one by 75 percent inside of square parentheses close that off and then we get a little up arrow is the moral of the story there still looking pretty big though uh, and that's because i spelled scale wrong that brings that down to a nice size and then we're going to just duplicate this whole paragraph tag change this one to a linkedin uh, and then you know the linkedin might be the same name so that is all hunky dory and just like that, we have our whole portfolio. We can see the links at the bottom like we've just been working on. We have the connect with me section. It's all super responsive. We can see that the different navigation links work perfectly. Uh, it just, oh, there's an issue. That's not supposed to be there. So let's just go to our main, come up to the top. Uh, here is our little button. On a large screen that should have an MR and the issue with the button is just that when we set the margin right to auto it's already set to auto so we have to set the left uh, ML to zero should do what we want it to do and now the button is indeed where it is portfolio looks cash money the links are responsive everything is great we got our little trolls all looks super professional extremely responsive very beautiful and effective i challenge you all to make some changes and if you do and want to share and show off post it in the discord so that everybody can have a look and you know get feedback and all that great stuff Thank you so much for watching the tutorial, my homies and homets. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Super appreciate the support, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Are you learning to code but not sure where to start? Be sure to check out the Small James Web Dev Roadmap for a whole lot of free beginner resources, or dive straight in with these videos.